do we have fire bans? Well, here's why. Because if people aren't responsible or if just something happens, uh, stuff can catch on fire real easy. Uh, I put, I'm posting this video to give you guys some information, not to scare anybody or do a Debbie Downer thing, but yeah, we had a fire in the next county over yesterday. It's still going. It went from, um, I want to say like 300 acres all the way up to over a thousand acres in less than a few hours because it was going pretty fast. And that's the kind of stuff that can happen. Luckily, they say that they have been containing it today, so we'll see what happens. But I just wanted to use this to make a point that, you know, when you're going out camping and you see a fire ban, please, please abide by it. You know, there's a good reason. They're not just being the fun police. Okay, as you guys can hear, there's a lot of airplane noise today. And I thought it was just, uh their normal thing and that they were just doing some training stuff but apparently it seems like something's on fire. Now I'm down here at this little park that I always hang out at and uh, I've been smelling smoke for a few days but um, that could have just been my imagination I don't know but people call me the human smoke detector but uh, we're gonna go walk over here and I'm gonna show you guys what I see. I don't know if you can see how hazy it is over there it's pretty hazy, so let's go walk over here. I think there's a fire. This is not uncommon in our area. That's one of the things we have to deal with pretty much on a daily basis now, even in the winter time, believe it or not. You see how that discoloration in the sky looks? Kind of looks like smoke to me. It smells like smoke. I hope I'm wrong. So we can get up here a little ways and see what I can see here. It just looks funky and it's not uh, sunset yet so this cloud shouldn't be that color. <clears throat> yeah, it looks like smoke. Got an airplane flying over. Of course that's not uncommon in our area. Sounds like World War II out here. Well now I'm not quite so sure. But wherever it is, it's too far away for me to get to. But it really looked and smelled like smoke there for a minute. I don't know. Kind of trippy. But living in these parts, you just can't be too sure. You know, you get uh, pretty paranoid. Okay, so I had to get inside the van because it's pretty noisy and stuff out there. And I did check my local news feed on the internet because I have a hard time getting our radio station here um, for some reason. But uh, yeah, there is a fire in the next county over. And it's pretty sad because our the county next to us is pretty dang dry. They always are drier than us. Um, the drought has always hit them worse, and so when they get a fire, it goes out of control pretty easily. I guess apparently this thing was a tiny little fire, and within two or three hours, it turned into a 300-acre fire, which is not huge compared to some of the ones that we, we get, but if they let it get out of control, then it could be pretty disastrous. Uh, last time, they had a great big fire over there. It destroyed a bunch of homes and all kinds of stuff. Uh, it was pretty pretty scary. Um, and it looks to me from the plume of smoke that I saw, um, and then I showed you guys on the video because that is smoke um, and not a cloud. It looks pretty close to um, our side of the county as well. So I, I'm not quite sure, but uh, yeah, I'm going to hopefully... See if I can um, check out some fire maps and stuff later on tonight and see exactly where it is. But um, yeah, it's pretty spooky. And I'm I'm posting this. I want to show you guys this because I think it's really important. Now that we're all, you know, not just van lifers, but bunches of people are coming out here to go camping. And um, they want to uh, enjoy the great outdoors. Um, it's becoming a huge deal these days, especially during the COVID thing. Because... Well, you know, people just don't want to get 
be in a motel and I don't blame them, you know, so they want to do the whole camping and RV thing, right? For their vacations. But, um, a lot of these folks that are doing it have never been camping before. They don't know what's going on. And I cannot stress enough that it's important. If they say there's a fire ban, please obey it. Do not put any kind of fire out there because this is what happens. A forest fire can start. Um, even the most well-managed fire pits can give off some type of ember or something to where it can spark a, a tree or hit a tree and then like light it on fire and start a whole forest fire. So just be really aware of that. If there's signs or things that the rangers are telling you, please obey it. There's a reason for it. They're not just trying to be, you know, um, the fun police. It is, you know, very important that this time of year that we obey fire laws. Um, our area is so dry and brittle a lot of the times these days that even in the winter time we have fires. We have to really be watchful of Unless it's been raining a lot and or there's snow on the ground, we have all we're always very, very cautious in and are watching out for any kind of fire. Um, we had a couple of small ones in my town last winter, for instance, and you know that that used to not happen, but it does all the time now. So literally, we are on fire watch every single day. Just so you guys know. So anytime that they say, please do not have a campfire, please obey it because it's it's very important. Make sure that it, when you do have a campfire, when it is okay to have one, make sure it's completely out. Make sure that your fire pit looks like um, what we call campfire soup. Um, just wet it as much as possible and bury it with dirt. Don't, you know, don't, um, you know, leave any embers burning at all or any suspect suspect embers burning before, you know when you leave because you never know it could catch something on fire while you're gone so yeah just be really aware and careful with what you do and I know that most people that watch my channel are but I just feel that it's important to bring it up especially since well I looked out my uh, little window today and saw fire so <laughs> you know I just kind of wanted to to put that out there for you guys and just you know like I say, if, if they have, if there's a fire ban, there's a good reason for it. Like I said, they're not just trying to take away your campfire fun. They're not trying to make it so you can't roast marshmallows and make s'mores. It's a very important thing to, um, obey those rules. And, um, also, uh, you know, what we like to tell people too is when you do have a campfire during certain times of the year, just make sure you use well-established campfire rings and stuff like that. And, and try not to build any new ones because, you know, you never know. Um, you might build it too close to a tree or something like that. So just, you know, make sure that, you know, it's in a good it's in a good spot and all that kind of stuff. And that you just use fire rings that have already been there. If you're camping in a spot that doesn't have a fire ring, you know, then just be really cautious of where you put it and that kind of thing. But, um, yeah, it's just really important. Um, you know, people don't realize that even like leaving like glass bottles, like Coke bottles or, um, or beer bottles or something like that on the side of the road can, um, start fires. Don't leave anything glass around the campsite or on the side of the road. Um, it's just like when you were kids and, um, you took a magnifying glass and you can burn stuff with, with the sunlight and the magnifying glass. Well, glass bottles do the same thing. Um, so just, you know, if you see any glass, you know, like that, you know, like a glass bottle or, or something like that, even if you didn't leave it there, pick it up anyway, because it, you know, especially if there's dry grass around or something like that, it could start a fire, you know, like I said before, you know, don't throw anything on the ground that's, that's lit, you know, just common sense kind of stuff. But yeah, it's pretty important. It's kind of spooky. Um, so hopefully... Hopefully everything will be all right out there and they'll put it out. Uh, but we've been having the bomber airplanes go over all day and they really are bombers. They're, um, a lot of people probably don't know, but they, they repurposed a lot of the old World War II era and other war era airplanes to uh, help fight fires. So they really are those old bomber airplanes. And what they do is, instead of dropping bombs is they drop fire retardant and water over fires. Um, so it's actually kind of neat, you know, that, that we still have that resource and, um, I'm sure there's some newer ones out there too, but, um, for the most part, a lot of them are old, you know, war airplanes that are actually being used to do something good. So, 
yeah, it's pretty, pretty neat. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just on edge. I really don't like, you know, fire season here. Uh, it's one of the things that's making me not want to actually stay here, even though I haven't saved up quite enough money yet. It's really, um, one of the things that makes me want to move away from this area. Um, it's not my favorite. One good thing though, is my house is on wheels and if something did happen, I can just drive away, but still, you know, no bueno for me. <laughs> so, uh, hopefully, you know, um, this isn't too much of a downer, but I thought it was a good opportunity to put out some good information on, you know, there's a, a reason, you know, for you new people out there, for you new boondockers and you new campers, just make sure, you know, to obey all the fire laws. Like I say, they're not the fun police. They're doing this for a reason. We do not want our forest to burn down. Okay. And if they think it's too dry or they say it's too dry, trust me, it is. And they push it as far as they can because they don't want people to not be able to have fun and stuff. But I'm telling you, once they say no fires, they mean it. No fires. And you can get fined and you can get in a very big trouble if you if you do light a fire during a fire ban. So, yeah. Um, anyway, just make sure you do your research before you go camping. Make sure that you know the laws and the rules at the time of the year that you're going. Make sure that you know whether or not the rangers have put in a fire ban. Um, and just a good rule of thumb, if the grass is brown where you're going camping, or if it is just really crackly under your feet when you're walking, chances are it, there is a fire ban in effect. And just to make sure, don't be lighting that campfire. You're going to have to use your camp stove to cook on. And sorry, s'mores and marshmallows and roasted weenies are out of the question. So I um, hope you guys got something out of this. And if you did, please uh, make sure to give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe and all that good YouTube stuff. And check my uh, video descriptions for all kinds of interesting things. And uh, we'll talk to you later. And I hope you guys have a good day. Bye.